Hi, I'm Dr. Rachel Langley. I work here at Pine Ridge Family Medicine. This is one of our actual exam rooms, so sorry if it's a little bit echoey or not what you're used to. Uh, but uh, I thought I would do an interactive video today, kind of, uh, more motion in the video than I typically have to demonstrate benign positional vertigo. So whenever someone walks into my office saying that they have dizzy spells, that's the number one thing I think of. It's really, really common. Uh, it also is known as BPV, so benign positional vertigo. So that name tells you right there that although it can definitely get in the way of your life and make you feel nauseous and miserable, that is benign. It's not something that's uh, indicating a worse pathology, that something is really wrong with you. It's actually really common. Positional means that when you turn your head or you move your body a certain way, that's what triggers the episodes of vertigo. So there's lots of different kinds of dizziness out there. Dizziness is a real broad term to use that uh, to describe certain sensations. But there's different kinds of dizziness. So there's like lightheadedness where you get like that tunnel vision feeling that's really common if you stand up too fast, have low blood pressure. There's... Um, vertigo, which is like seeing the room spinning around you. Uh, and there's also just feeling like the whole world is kind of off kilter, like you're trying to walk around. It's really common if you drink too much alcohol. Um, also, other things can cause it as well. So there's just three types of dizziness off the top of my head. So this one is different. This is vertigo, so benign positional vertigo. And what actually causes this, you can see my super fancy drawing here. Hopefully it will be helpful instead of confusing. But you can see the ear over there that uh, has a hole in the middle and then there we go. So there's my picture of your outside ear that you can see and the hole in the middle that goes and feeds sound into this tympanic membrane, that line right there, and feeds into a snail-like organ inside your ear that allows you to hear things. Pretty cool. And then you have these semicircular canals. There's supposed to be three of them there and they're all going different directions. So going up and down and front and back and side to side. And that's what allows you to feel your position in space. So even with your, when you have your eyes closed and you can sense whether your head is tilted forward or you're upside down or whatever, even though you can't see anything, it's, that, it's those semicircular canals that tell you those position. They actually have these tiny little hairs inside that have rocks on the very ends of the hairs and they're sitting in fluid, so the fluid moves around, and so the, the little hairs and their rocks move around and transmit impulses to your brain to tell you where you are oriented in space in all those many degrees of forward, backward, side to side, up, down. So that's where the sensation is coming from. So the idea is that one of those little rocks, those little calcium deposits that's on the end of that hair, breaks off. And now it's mushing all those little hairs. And guess what happens when those hairs think they're mushed? They think you're doing something crazy. And so they're telling your brain that you're doing something crazy, but the rest of your hairs are like, no, 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 guys, it's cool. Like, we're just sitting here. We just happen to move our heads suddenly to the left. It's okay. But that confusion into your brain equals vertigo, equals dizziness. Your brain doesn't know what's going on, so it tells you to just kind of freak out. And actually, one of the signs of benign positional vertigo, if you have a buddy who's watching you suffer, is that your eyes flicker back and forth really fast. I can't even get close to, to imitating it. But you might see that in someone suffering from an episode of BPV, is their eyes are flickering back and forth because they're trying to keep track of where you are in space. Usually your eyes can find that and help you to figure out where you are and orient yourself can't really help in this case because it's not coming from your eyes at all. It's actually not external. It's all internal. So this sounds miserable. Luckily, those calcium deposits will eventually break down or get stuck and stop causing issues. But it's likely to recur too. Like after you have one of those stones pop off, you might have another one in the future. So instead of, of being scared of what's going on, that suddenly you're very, feeling very dizzy and nauseous, you can now know that it is benign positional vertigo if you had these signs, and uh, so that's reassuring. Uh, and something to be aware of is that it does not cause hearing loss. If you're having hearing loss, then it's not BPV. It's not painful. It might make you nauseous and maybe actually throw up, but it's not a painful condition. So if those aren't the case, then it's not BPV. So what do you do to... Be sure that you have this. Well, you can diagnose this with what's called the Dix Hall Pike maneuver. That's D I X Hall Pike if you're Googling it. 
So I'm sitting down on our, one of our Mighty Fine exam tables to demonstrate this. Uh, so the way you demonstrate, if, and you can even figure out which ear it is that's causing trouble, so I'll demonstrate the right ear. So here I am sitting down, I'm gonna tilt my head slightly to the right, and then I'm gonna sit back pretty fast and tilt my head back off the edge of the table with my right ear facing down. I'll hold that position for about 30 seconds, and if I have BPV, my eyes will be flicking back and forth possibly, but I will definitely be feeling really miserable and nauseous. After I sit here for about 30 seconds, I'll sit back up real fast, and this again should make me feel really crummy. So, always a fun way to diagnose something is by making it worse. Wonderful, so now you feel worse. Now you can treat it with what's called the Epley Maneuver, that's spelled E-P-L-E-Y. And it's kind of similar to the Dix Hall Pike Maneuver. It kind of starts out the same way. So again, you want to be on a table, a sofa, a bed, where you can lean back and your head will fall off the end. So this is treating again for the right ear. It doesn't really matter which ear you start with. You try one way, see if it makes it better or worse. Try the other way, see if it makes it better or worse. Stick with the one that makes it better. Um, though that diagnostic one that we just did might help you too. So we figured out in my case that it was in my right ear. So we'll start out the same way. I'll tilt back fast, tilt my head back and slightly tilting to the right with my ear facing the floor. Hold that for about 30 seconds. And then after 30 seconds, this is a little bit of a tricky one to do by yourself, but you wanna keep the angle of your, your chin to your shoulder kind of the same while you roll over onto your side. So now instead of facing the side, you're facing the ground with your chin kind of on your shoulder. You hold this position for about 30 seconds. I'll check the camera to make sure I'm making sense. And then after holding this for 30 seconds, you sit up. You kind of might dangle your legs over the edge of the table or couch or bed, whatever you're sitting on, and then sit up quickly, keeping that head position with your chin to your shoulder. And hold that for about 30 seconds, and you should feel a little bit better. That should be a way of trapping those little stones in a place where they're not going to cause so much trouble. But it might need a couple times. It should feel a little bit better every time you do it. I've definitely had patients where I've had to do it a couple times, and they've gotten really close to throwing up on me. Um, if you're helping someone with this, I like to hold onto their elbows or help them position their head through the different positions. Um, Sometimes I'm just standing there holding a garbage can for them in case they do lose it. Uh, but I have yet to have a time when I, I thought it was BPV and we went through that position and it didn't give them a lot of relief. Sometimes it took three or four times, but it kept getting better and better. The, the duration of the, the vertigo with every change in position got less and less. So that was promising. Um, so yeah. There's my video on benign positional vertigo. I hope it's helpful. Feel free to Google those positions too. Uh, you can get some good uh, diagrams online of what those will actually look like and that can be helpful. And if you found this video helpful, please subscribe to our channel so you can find out about, about other uh, videos that we release. And here's some other videos that you might find useful. Thanks for watching.